All right. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to the committee on the land use. I am Council Member Rafael Salamanca, Chair of this committee. Thank you. Um, I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee who are with us today. We have uh, Council Members Constantinides, Deutsch, Chair Kalos, Kuhl, Landsman, Reynoso, Richards, Chair Adams, Diaz, Chair Moya, and Council Member Rivera. I want to thank Chair Moya, Chair Adams, and Chair Kalos for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today we will be voting on items referred out of our zoning and planning subcommittees. From our zoning subcommittee, we'll be voting to approve with modifications the 1601 D Cobb Avenue rezoning LU 164 and 165 for, proper, for property in Councilmember Espinage District in Brooklyn. The applicant, 1601 D Cobb Avenue, Owner LLC seeks a zoning map change and a zoning text amendment to apply MIH options one and two to the rezoning area to be rezoned from a manufacturing district to an R7A district. Because Council Member Espinad cannot be here today, I would like to provide some context for the review of this application. For over four years, Council Members Espinal and Reynoso have supported community residents and organizations in the Bushwick community plan process. The process has resulted in zoning and land use recommendations that were developed by the dedicated members of the Bushwick Community Plan Steering Committee. These recommendations are intended to create opportunities for new affordable housing, to create outdated zoning in order to preserve existing housing and neighborhood ca character, and to promote inclusive economic development in Bushwick a community that has been facing immense development pressures as rents continue to rise and long-time residents continue to be displaced. In light of the Bushwick Community Plan's goals, the applicant has recently partnered with affordable housing developer Riseboro, and together they will develop the site under the Ella term sheet to advance a project that contains 100% affordable housing. They have worked together with HPD and they are able to commit to 121 affordable housing units. Amidst a conversation of new affordable units, a housing preservation issue on the site adjacent to the proposed development was identified. Two converted loft buildings, each containing 21 units occupied as residents, have windows along the lot line facing the proposed development. The developers have agreed to address the issue of the lot line windows and have committed to filing an easement in order to guarantee a 15-foot setback from the lot line that will ensure adequate light and air for the tenants of the loft buildings. Change to 100% affordable buildings of the, at the AMI's proposed and a setback of 15 feet from the loss have resulted in a plan that is consistent with the goals of the Bushwick community. Truly affordable housing and non-displacement, both of significant public benefit. The council will be modifying the application in several ways. First, we will remove MIH option two and add the deep affordability option. MIH option one will also apply and the proposed project will comply with it. I will now discuss our zoning map changes. Only one of the two loft buildings, which are in between Wyckoff fronting lots and the development site is protected by the loft law. The proposed R7A zoning for these loft buildings would allow for development more than twice as large as the existing buildings, creating an incentive to develop the properties and, dis and displace the tenants. For that reason, the council is modifying the proposed zoning for the loft buildings to a more moderate density of R6, R6A which will legalize the uses of these buildings under zoning, but with a zoning district that more closely matches the existing size of the buildings. This change will still trigger MIH, ensuring that permanently affordable housing is mandated in the long term, but without putting existing tenants at risk of displacement. Finally, the council will also be modifying the application to remove the Wyckoff Avenue commercial properties from the rezoning, leaving the M1-1 zoning in place. The displacement of local jobs and businesses is a stark reality throughout Bushwick. Historically, the existence of manufacturing zones has allowed some businesses to avoid the development pressures faced by businesses located in mixed-use residential districts. This is why the retention of manufacturing zones is so important to the community. Council Member Spinal and I agree with the view raised by many community members at our hearings that the properties along Wyckoff provide jobs and space for local businesses today and hold additional economic development potential for the future as a home for local industrial or commercial small businesses. The Bushwick Community Plan also seeks to unlock the potential of manufacturing zones for local economic development and pressuring the Wyckoff M zone in this action will preserve that future opportunity. Council Member Spinal is in support of all the modifications I have described. 
from our planning subcommittees will be voting to approve the LU 157, the 286 West 151st Street tax exemption application for property in Council Member Perkins District in Manhattan. This application is for the termination of the prior exemption for this fully occupied 18 unit residential co-op for low income households. A new article 11 tax exemption is proposed. This approval will facilitate repayment of outstanding liens and facilitate repairs to the property pursuant to capital improvement plan. Council Member Perkins is in support of the approval of this application. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Uh, Council Member Reynoso, you have any remarks? No? Um, just in, in regards to the DeKalb Avenue project in Bushwick, we are pushing our Bushwick community plan through. We're waiting for the community to give us um, their plan so that we can start moving it forward here. But the DeKalb Avenue project um, speaks to the principles that have been laid out by the community in relation to the rezoning and what we want to see done. So we're very happy with the, um, what Espinal has been able to negotiate when it comes to the DeKalb Avenue site. Um, so congratulations to him. Uh, Bushwick is very happy and we're looking forward to voting yes on this project and seeing it be a model moving forward as to how we should be moving forward with these sites. So thank you, Chair. Awesome, thank you. Any other comments from members of the committee? All right, no, so now I will call on I will call a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LUs 157 and to approve with the modifications I have described LUs 164 and 165. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on land use. Chair Salamanca. Aye, I know. Konstantinidis. Aye, I know. Deutsch. Aye, I know. Kalos. Aye, I know. Ku. Lansman. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Adams. Diaz. Aye. No. Moya. Aye. Rivera. I vote aye on land use number 157. Regarding land use 164 and 165, uh, my husband is currently employed by Camber Property Group as a director of operations, and they will be leasing property at block 3237 upon conclusion, and for these reasons, I elect to recuse myself on 164 and 165. <laughs> I abstain on land use 164 and 165 and vote aye on 157. Councilmember Barron. I voted 12 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. LU 157 has been adopted, and by a vote of and LU items 164 and 165 have been adopted by the committee. 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. All right, I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, Council Land staff for attending today's hearing. I will leave the roll open for 15 minutes.